welcome back. I'm Pastor Cat. This is your weekly encouragement. Hey, it is great to be back with you today, taking a bit of a hike. I'm at a place called the Spokane House. It's an education center for children and things like that. But I found a nice spot. I usually don't get a bench to sit on. This is very pleasant today. You know, as I was hiking in here today, the sun was kind of beating down on my back. And as you can probably tell, I have less hair than I used to. And so I began to think, man, do I really want to be out here in the sun today? And the actual thought that maybe I was suffering uh, for this little bit of encouragement that I was seeking um, sort of struck me, which leads us, of course, to our passage for today. In Romans chapter 8, Paul is talking about suffering and how it is that we should actually view our personal suffering, whether it's emotional or physical or financial. And he says this, starting at verse um, 18, so 818, it says, For I consider the sufferings of this present time not worthy to compare with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For anxious longing of creation awaits eagerly for the revealing of the sons of God. I love that, that our suffering can't even compare, not worthy um, to live up to the glory that is about to be revealed to us. And then he talks about this idea of this anxious longing of creation that awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. And as you can tell, I'm out in creation today. There really is something beautiful about it. However, if you've ever tried to tend a garden before, you know that weeds crop up and it becomes a real struggle. Here, Paul's alluding to the fact that creation itself is waiting for the Savior of the universe to return. It goes on, for creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, not because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself also be set free from its slavery to corruption and into freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. If your life is anything at all like mine, you know that you get very excited about a new toy or a, a new car, maybe a, a new plant you've put in your garden, something like that. Something that really does it for you. Well, if again, if your life is like mine, you know that it's not long until that thing wears out and the kind of shine that got you excited about in the first place begins to wear off. That not only happens in our head, it actually happens in reality. Everything you currently own is going to wear out and be a struggle. If left to its own devices, nature will take over and knock a house down or tear a road apart. This is kind of that groaning that we're talking about here. He goes on in verse 22. For we know the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. And not only this, but we ourselves having the first fruits of the Spirit. We ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. See, we're in the same spot the creation is. We're waiting for our redemption. Even if we pretend that life is going along swimmingly and maybe we don't think of the return of Christ very often, even inside ourselves, we're groaning to have that fellowship again and see Christ's return. Verse 24, for in hope we've been saved, but hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he already sees? If we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance, we wait eagerly for it. You know, I have a couple children and it's been interesting as they grow up to see them eagerly await the big milestones in life. Uh, your freshman year of high school is a big milestone. They're looking forward to turning 16 and getting their driver's license is a big milestone. Their first job, going off to school, um, and of course, their first step into career and long-term relationships. It's easy to see in someone else but if we're not careful we miss it for ourselves if we don't eagerly await the coming Savior and the redemption of ourselves then perhaps we are not looking at things with a hopeful eye as we're called to do by Paul here. In 26, he wraps up with a very famous verse and I wanted to make sure we got to it, but I wanted it in context. It says this, in the same way, so now we're relating this idea back to creation and the way our bodies groan for the coming savior. In the same way, 
the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. I've been in this position a whole lot the last um, couple months, uh, years even. Uh, a number of friends of mine have passed away and I've had to do their funeral services and say goodbye and be with the grieving families as they try to figure out how to put life back together without that patriarch, without that matriarch. And when it comes to those times, you really want to pray the right thing. You want to pray in the Spirit of God and you don't have it. Here we're promised that the Holy Spirit within us is going to groan those things out for us when we don't know what to say. So my encouragement this week is make sure you are hopeful for the returning Savior and the redemption of us as blessed children, adopted sons and daughters. On top of that, when you don't know what to pray, it's as simple as saying, God, I don't know what to pray. The spirit within me does know how I'm feeling and pray anyway. Well, this has been very encouraging to me. I pray your suffering is not unbearable this week. Don't forget that it doesn't even compare to the glory that awaits you. Well, God bless. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. We'll see you next week. Be encouraged.